before we get started <clears throat> with the lesson, um, what I'm going to do is go through the lesson <clears throat> and then um, next week, uh, if you will, every female, woman, girl, uh, listening, um, that you would either text me or email me your perspective on the title and the scriptures and the lesson itself. In other, in other words, what you've learned from it. One of the reasons I'm, I was going to teach another lesson called Judging Versus Review. And I got that lesson at 10 o'clock. It's because my wife really, really, really wanted to give me the woman's perspective on the lesson this week. But because of our sister who passed, she was uh, over after being at work from 9 to 5. She left and went over to the house to help clean it up uh, to get it ready for uh, to be moved out of. And so uh, every day this week, she's been uh, busy. So she didn't have a chance and she really wanted to. And so uh, for that sake and your sake, um, I'm not going to teach the judges versus rebuke. I'm going to teach the lesson. But again, I would like if during the week, texting or emailing, that you would write what you've learned from it or your perspective of what you see that um, the lesson is. So here we go with the lesson. The title of this lesson is Do You Loathe Your Husband? Do you loathe your, your husband? Um, I don't. I don't even know how the lesson came about. You know, just you know, studying or looking through my Bible, and I came across a scripture, and that scripture began to prick my heart, and it was the one you see first here in Ezekiel. In Ezekiel, let me widen this a little bit more so I can see. There you go. Um, in Ezekiel 16, it says, Thou art thy mother's daughter that loatheth her husband. And just when I seen that, it's just like, oh, okay. But when I look at thou art thy mother's daughter, it means you are the daughter of your mothers, or you're just like your mother, or you're just like that whom you have been taught. And then it was interesting as I began to keep reading because God was making the statement to Israel that you're just like your mother's daughter. And it's interesting when God says things like that because he's talking to first a nation, a nation of people, which means everybody, men, women, children, everybody. But when he singles out the mother and daughter or the mother or the wife, it's because you got to remember, God was married to Israel. And, and that's why when he speaks, when he speaks to Israel, he's speaking to a her. In other words, that's the that's the original bride of the Lord, the first church, the natural branches. And even though it was a man's name that he changed from Jacob to Israel, he knew that that would be self-inclusive of everybody that would be joined unto him. So when you hear her in your scriptures in the Old Testament, you can, when, when God's talked about Israel, and then he talks about her in, in two parts, mainly Israel and Judah. And the reason he does that, because remember, the Lord came through 
the tribe of Judah. And so you would always have that split between the two kings. So then it got interesting because as I look at everything, we look at it on TV and all the things that's going on with the wars and how, again, they're starting to recognize that Palestine and Israel are cousins because of Isaac and Ishmael. They even have in the world, in the United Nations, a Abrionic covenant, which really means we're one. Abrionic, the father of faith of all men. So when you see here, you are your mother's daughters that loatheth her husband. So the mother loathed her husbands and the daughters learned and also loathed their husbands. And it says, and her children. And, and isn't it strange that if you loathe your husband without even realizing it, you also loathe your children. So when a wife is against her husband or or pass the word disrespect it affects the children and it says thou art thou art this is the sister of thy sisters which loatheth their husbands and their children and your mother was a Hittite, your father, an Amorite. And I like these things because, again, he's doing this division of people on the earth that some is not even, quote, unquote, Israel, but he's still making this division of you're all one. So whether the mother doesn't teach the daughter correctly, according to God, and the daughters won't teach their daughters and, and your sister friends in the street when you get together. Yeah, you ain't got to do that. And you ain't got to hear that. And you ain't got to. It all affects the husband and the children and everybody. That's why a woman can build a house up or tear a house down. That's the power been given to her. She's kind of like the foundation, even though, again, the man is the head of the woman, but the woman is like a foundation of a family. So it says, and thine, thine elder sister, your oldest sister is Samaria. Your older sister is Samaria and her daughters that dwell on thy left hand. So God is saying on your, on your left hand is your older sister. And then your younger sister that dwelleth on your right hand is Sodom and her daughters. So when you think about Sodom and Gomorrah, you don't think about Israel. And when you think about Samaria, you do because they're half Israelites and somebody else. And the reason I'm setting, uh, or the Lord has allowed me to set all this up, so you get a real understanding of when he makes the statement, your mother's daughters you are, that load their husbands. So we already know that for the Bible to be, be used for reproof and correction, and instruction and righteousness, if I was a woman of God, and I want to know all about me, not my husband, not my children. I want to know all about me because I am what affects them. And I want to know what kind of woman does the Lord want me to be? Not what my mother wants me to be, because evidently that's messed up. Not what my sisters or my friends want me to be, because evidently that's messed up. Not even what my husband wants me to be. I want to know what does God want me to be to my husband. 
because his the husband is the Lord. And as I say I love the Lord, then I have to show that with the human element that I see, like saying I love my brother, and it's a lie if I don't love men in the world. I'm lying to say I love God. Well, if I say I love my husband, uh, and, and and I say I love God, but I don't love my husband, then I'm a lie. And if I say, uh-oh, I can't stand him. I mean, I'm going to follow him because I'm supposed to, but I loathe him. Then God says, then you can never love me because if you loathe him, you loathe me. Yes, Lord, like that last song we heard, when my flesh, weak flesh wants to sin, teach me, teach me. And we know that to, for the Lord to teach us how to walk, what is the number one thing that accompanies that? Suffering in the flesh. Jesus learned to obey by the things he says. Teach me to obey. That's what that song said. To learn to obey. If Christ had to learn, obey by the things he suffered, who do we think we would be? So as a woman, I want to know. I want to know what does the Lord want me to be unto him and how to love him correctly. So when I look here, Isaiah 54, 5. For thy maker is thine husband. The Lord of hosts is his name. So remember, first, who is he talking to? The nation of Israel as a whole, but as his wife. And I need Israel to know, henceforth, the first church and coming later, the grafted in Gentile, thy maker is your husband. The Lord of hosts is his name. And thy redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the God of the whole earth, shall he be called. So that lets you know again that when I was saying of everybody, it's everybody that believes in him. So I already got understanding that God is my husband. So even as I'm reading this right now for the female gender, the male should be listening closely because they are part of Israel. They are part of the church. But this lesson is specifically for the woman. Because in the day that we live, it's getting worse and worse and worse. Not only do you loathe a husband before you even get one, young girls are taught they don't need one. And just simple things of caring for a, 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 a man and the children, young girls, is it, they have to learn so much of it when they get in it by trial and error, and then hopefully then they got a good husband that's in the Lord that can help lead or guide them into that. But if not, it's all on her. That already make you mad. What you mean it's all on her? Because if she have no one to guide her and all she had was her mother who loathed her husband and her friends who loathed their husbands, all she has is her. In other words, she has the Holy Spirit, but she don't know that yet because she don't know none of this stuff that we're reading because it wasn't taught to her. And she ain't got a man to teach it to her because the man don't know. So your maker is your husband. The Lord of hosts is his name. Jump into the New Testament. For after this manner, what manner? For after this manner in old time, 
the holy women also who trusted in God, not the ones that didn't, the ones that did. The ones who trusted in God adorned themselves being in subjection unto their own husbands. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord. Thy maker is thy husband, the Lord of hosts is his name. The ones that trusted in God, seeing their husbands in the same manner. Then that part comes in, in case like you dismissed all the rest that was said. Whose daughters you are as long as. Not just, not just, uh, uh, and when I mean who daughters you are, who act like God's daughters, the ones that trust in him, being a subjection to their own husband, seeing him as Lord, whose daughters you are. Lord, teach me how I should be to you. Well, I'm, well whose daughters you are, as long as you do well. As long as you do well, the doing well is being subjection to your own husband. The doing well is seeing him even as your Lord. In other words, that much respect. And are not afraid of your girlfriends in the street. And are not afraid of your mother that abhor hers and not afraid of your sisters and your sister's sisters and your cousins or whoever you want to name of the female gender that also loathe their husbands as long as you do well and not afraid of what they think. That's what it means, not afraid with any amazement. You know how it is, women that don't know nothing about their Bible and talk about, I'm going to church today and praise the Lord, but they got the funkiest attitude towards their husbands. And them same ones when you're at your church function saying, why are you fixing his plate? Can't he get his own? I don't like the way of what he just said to you. You know, you don't have to take that. He barely come to church anyway. He don't know nothing about what we be doing up in here. We come in here to praise the Lord. As long as you do well and are not afraid with any amazement, that's whose daughters you are. That's when you are a daughter, wife of God. So it goes on. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husband. Which we read. As unto the Lord which you just read. Not that phony scripture that the women that made up church women submit yourself to your husband if he's in the Lord or if he's acting like the Lord. If he ain't acting like the Lord, I ain't got to follow him. We're going to see that later. That ain't what it said. If you want to be one of God's daughters, submit yourself to your husband as unto the Lord, as Sarah did hers, because the Lord of hosts is your husband. And you prove it by submitting yourself to yours. The word submit seems very nice until the other word is going to come into play. Then, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. He's the savior of the body for all the church and the men, 
but this 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 man this thing that you loathe and don't respect is that way for you whether he acts like it or not the proof is in a as long as you do well and if your mind slip and you forget what you do well mean go back and read when you be in subjection to your own husband And if your mind is asking, well, what kind of husband? We're going to see that later. Therefore, I mean, all the stuff you done read and heard. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. That everything means at all times. Because I done heard the complaint on everything. What? Be subject to him if he want to go to the bar and take me with him. Be subject to him. If he... No, it just means at all times. Or having a ready mind to. So, a, a woman who says, I want to know what kind of woman the Lord wants me to be. And I want to know how I can serve my husband, this Lord. Well, one, by serving the Lord he gave you. So he goes on to teach you how. And not only does he teach you how, so that your daughters don't loathe their husbands, that you teach them. But you can't teach them what you don't know. And for a lot of you, it's too late because they're already older and already learned all the mess from you. And now you're trying to get it back and straighten it out. And here we go. Now they're kind of on their own. Unless they start asking the Lord, he will show them the same kind of scriptures. If that's what they go looking for. If their heart says, I don't want to be like my mom. I want to be like somewhere in this Bible has got to be what kind of wife should I be to my husband? And what kind of wife should I be to the Lord? And as they go looking, God will not hold that back from them. But hopefully they are marry a man that will guide them back to that. Which is going to cause reproof, which is going to cause hurting to obey. And they're going to take it hard at first. And hopefully they have a long suffering man, which is a lesson I'm going to get to soon. How does a man know uh, if he uh, despises his wife? Then it says, speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. I'm hoping that's what we've done so far. But here we go. A list of some sound doctrine. Not the only thing, but just one of the lines, one of the precepts. Speak those things which become sound doctrine. The aged women, likewise, because it talked about the man at first in, in other passages in Titus that the aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers. You know, your daughter watching you uh, make your husband out to be wrong when he ain't the one wrong. Not false accusers, not giving too much wine, Teachers of good things. And that giving too much wine will be giving too much pleasures, if you want to know what that means. It ain't just talking about drinking a bottle of Manischewitz. Teachers of good things. That they, who was they? The mother the elder woman, the one on the left hand, the Sumerian, the, the older sister, that they may teach the younger women, the, the, the Sodomers the, the, on the right hand. That's why when I read those scriptures, it just blew me away. 
that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their husbands. And I like this, to love their children. Because you've seen in that other scripture, when you load your husbands, the children get affected. That's a hurting feeling to know that if you load your husband, you actually load your children. Then to be discreet, these are the things that the, the elder women should be teaching the younger to be discreet. You know what discreet means? Again, I, I'm not going to judge nobody's um uh, uh uh how much is discreetness, which means your hair got to be in a bun and your clothes got to be down to your ankles. And I'm not judging that. It's your heart that knows. And most of your daughters, you raise them in your younger days while they're still young women and they watch you when you ain't got over yet your short skirt skirts in your closet. And then you go to church and learn a little bit and your shirt is skirt is a little longer. But the girl is already 20 years old. And then you say to her, take that off. Why are you wearing that? To be discreet, chaste. Chaste. That's been changed a lot. That's been changed a lot. Even in my heart, I'm sad because I sometimes I think I'm soft. Because there's so much of, of fornication. In other words, things without marriage is so common. It's almost like it ain't nothing no more. We all see God. Chase keepers at home. That don't mean vacuum cleaners. That don't mean dishwashers. It means keep your foot at home. That's why it's coupled with chase and discreet. It's almost the, 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 the strange woman in the street. She don't keep her foot at home. She's out in the street. Keepers at home. Good. And here's that word I told you that's going to jump in that almost start changing everything you done learned so far and everything you might be soaking in, all of a sudden this word comes in and you got a problem. Obedient to their own husband. See, you seem subject to, but the word obedient came in. And that's when that lady sung, when my flesh, weak flesh is about to sin, teach me, Lord, to obey. See, nowhere in your Bible will you ever find God tells a man to obey a woman. Never. Now, he should be subject to her because we are all subject one to another. But when it comes to a husband and a wife, you should teach your younger daughters to be obedient to their husbands by you being obedient to yours. And then when he gives you that reason, that part scares the living daylights out of me if I was a woman. That the word of God be not blasphemed. If you don't teach her to be obedient to her husband, don't teach her to be chaste and discreet, don't teach her to be so-and-so, so-and-so, God's word gets blasphemed. So in other words, God always takes sin that we don't consider large and he gives us scriptures to make small things more exceeding sinful. 
because the bigger the sin seems, the more we pay attention, hopefully. See, like, like I said, like right, right now, the chase thing of, of your daughter already living with a man, but you don't think much of it because, I mean, you don't really even talk to her about it no more because it's just kind of a small thing now. But we wait too late. Now, that don't mean that if you taught them, they ain't going to go out and do what they want to. He's just telling you who might be saying in your heart, what kind of woman of God should I be? And it's sad for all men and women that we learned a lot of this stuff late. Ain't that as hopeless? Because the repentance is still there. But at least if you're living it now, maybe they might be watching to tell their daughters. So 1 Corinthians 11.3 says, I would not have, but I would not have you I'm sorry, I'm reading too fast. But I would have you know, well, I want you to know that the head of every man is Christ. Okay, that's been established. Jesus is the head of every man. Right? And the head of the woman is the man. And the head of Christ, the head of of Israel. Christ is the first Israel of God. He's the firstborn. He's the head of the church. He's the head of the body. Guess who his head is? God. Guess what he is to God? A bride. God seeing himself as a beautiful son, but a bride. That's why we don't understand. We don't even understand bride and woman and when what God sees. And it's not in your lesson, but that's why in Ephesians, when he said all this stuff, I'm talking about a husband and wife and so and so I'm speaking concerning Christ in the church. Because we know that our maker is our husband. And the Lord of hosts is his name. So we got the head of man, because women always want to know, if I got to do all this and obey and all this kind of stuff, well, who who's who going to tell a man what to do? That's why you think you need to tell him. The head of a man is Christ, not the woman. For as Adam was first formed, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. And those scriptures are there for the protection of a woman. I know you didn't get some of them old time songs I played. Maybe some of you did. But they were get behind me, Satan. Get behind me. You know, I, you... you you ain't you ain't gonna get nothing over on me. Like in the garden, you know, deceive, get behind me. Because again, when you look, God is still trying to protect the woman by the man being the head, the one to guide her to. And if your man is still fighting with this, but what if he he don't know? And what if he, how you know what God has given him to know? That don't stop you from obeying God, which we're going to see. So now here we go to the end. If you don't want, I have to read this. If you don't want to die, 
having lived a lie, being deceived by your lust for power. That's what it was in the beginning, the deception, and that's what it is now. You know how every man, when he sins, he's drawn away of his own lust. Don't take that word lust like you think lust, like after somebody like sex, even though all that's part of sin. That lust means after what you, what you desire for yourself. Being self-willed. Can't nobody tell you nothing. That's why, again, even in church, I'm talking church folk, because even in church, the women want to be, well, if I can't be the head and, and they know that like, something's wrong with that, we'll make ourselves equal. So just because you can go to school and get a degree and it says that I'm a bishop and I'm a pastor and I'm a so-and-so, that don't make you nothing as far as a man is concerned. according to God. So if you want to die in a lie, being deceived by your lust for power and the devil's enticement, that's why, again, a woman was deceived. Who was she deceived by? We already know. The enemy. Listen, when we sin, there's two elements. It's our own lust. In other words, I like this for me. And the devil is nothing more with the enticements. So you put the carrot in front of the horse. He'll run after the carrot. And so and so, so and so. You put power in front of a woman that I could be just like the man. And how come we can't run the church? And how come we can't so and so, so and so? How come? When I went and got all my knowledge about God, I can't tell my husband what we're supposed to be doing. He's trying to guide me. I know what the Bible says. If you don't want to die in your deception, I'm fixing to scroll down and let's break down these verses. Let's break these verses down. And hopefully it'll help with the loathing the self-willedness. Because that's what, I want to explain this. The self-willedness. Self-willed means you won't let nothing guide you but you. And your excuses for it, with the devil's enticements, they're strong. They're strong. And if it wasn't for but the mercy of God, even like right now, you would lie in them. That would be your lover. You will be committing adultery against your maker. That's what it means to lie down with, to sniff in the wind. So let's break it down. Here's the first part. This takes away all that he don't know nothing. He don't go to church. I ain't got to listen to him until he gets straight. I ain't listen. Here we go. Likewise, you wives, be in subjection to your own husband. Now, you done already read. If you could do that, you know, if you could follow that, then you're like daughters of Sarah who trusted in the Lord as long as that if any obey, listen, be, be in subjection to your own husband, that if any obey not the word, if you have a husband that don't obey the word, all that has to do with don't know, don't nothing. He's just you're the one that's in the Lord and all these things that you say, but you use them to be self-willed. If he obey not the Lord, that also may be, listen, without the word. 
they also may without the word be one. You want to win them over? Don't use the word. This is God telling you this. See, to you, this feels the opposite. Well, how am I getting then? How am I getting if he don't obey the word? Somebody got to tell him the head of the man is Christ. You know how God wants the winning? By the conversation of the wise. Look up that word in every other Bible, thesaurus. That word conversation don't mean opening your mouth. It means how you live before him. And we're going to read later how you're supposed to live before him. If you want to be in subjection to him, the one that don't obey the word, God is giving him a chance to be one by the way you live. So the next verse. While they, that's the husband, behold your chaste conversation as how you live coupled with fear. See, he's watching a woman that fears the Lord so much, even in his crazy mind, when he thinks he might be getting away with the conviction of your living is winning him because you fear or trust in the Lord. For after this manner, now you see where that scripture came from. After this manner, what manner? A woman that lives by the conversation and not trying to open her mouth to tell him how he's supposed to be living and what he's supposed to be doing and how he's supposed to be doing it. After this manner in old time, holy women also who trusted in God adorned themselves being in subjection to their own husband. The reason the word adorn is there, there's other scriptures in between here that's talked about to adorn yourself, you know, like you put ornaments on a tree to make the tree look good. That's In other words, that's what he sees, this disobedient man. They adorn themselves being in subjection to their own husband. Back to the same scripture you just read. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters you are as long as you do well, as long as, and are not afraid with any amazement, which we already explained. So we don't already broke this down before you got here. It's open. I'm going to cut my mic off. It's, it's your chance. Get thee behind me, Satan. Don't let his enticement stop you for all the reasons you think you don't have to say nothing. Every time now, just be, I'm going to say this too. Every time now, I told my wife we were talking today. Every time now I think about a close sister who's gone. I think about when you think tomorrow, you don't know. Might be your only chance now. That even includes, it'll be your repentance because you acknowledge. And the reason I say that, her boys found in her phone that song I sent her that night of the Denied Stone, she wrote to me, I will... Thank you for the song. I will listen to it tomorrow. But she never sent it. It's in her phone. Either she never got a chance to send it, or we know for now, no, she didn't have a chance to send it. And she used the words tomorrow. God bless you. It's open.
Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, there's there's a lot going through my mind as it pertains to the loathe your husband. And if you're on, if I'm honest, there are times where I do loathe my husband. Um, and how do I do that? When I don't want to obey what he tells me, as well as understanding that when I obey my husband, I'm obeying God. And if I obey God, then I'm obeying my husband. So for me, when I think back as a child, growing up with my own mom, there were things in her marriage that of course, as a child, you don't understand. And um, she did do some things that um, now as an adult that I learned um, that are not correct as it pertains to my husband. Um, I had to learn that to hold my husband in high esteem. Um, and not to uh, dishonor him. Um, by talking back and, and, you know, saying things that I shouldn't say and going along with the otherwise and, you know, you don't have to do this, you don't have to do that, you know, been there, done that or whatever. But it ultimately for me comes down to God is showing me, me, what you, what I need you to do, the wife I want you to be. And I stopped. I try really hard to stop looking at what he's doing because I'm not the head of him. Christ is the head of him. And I have to trust that God uh, will show him whatever. But like you were saying, um, you as a wife, you really have to learn from the word, how can I be a wife like Sarah? What does that mean? Obey. Um, there's so many things that happen in a marriage and in our lives uh, as a couple that can be looked at as um, uh, a, a woman being weak, you know, when she obeys her husband. When, when uh, he says no to something she may want to do and she goes, oh, there's so many. But for me, I'm always asking God to help me to understand. And it always comes back to me. Um, my children, and I, you know, and I don't even know if this is something to be happy about, but especially my oldest daughter used to say to me all the time, Mom, why you gotta do what he says? And Mom, why you gotta always pay for this? And Mom, why you a child that doesn't understand. And so I did sit my children and I told her, he's my husband, okay? He is the head of this house. He is the head. And it's not about being, um, uh, being, oh, it is about being obedient. But once I realized what that meant, I feel good when I can say I was obedient, okay? Without the malice and without all the thoughts in my head and the loathing that I had, um, you know, before I understood. Um, I'm trying to, to as, as, as you were going through the lesson, I'm like, well, why, you know, what do you mean by loathing? And I had to be honest with myself. Every time you have an evil thought about your husband, you loathe him. Or, you know, and every time you want to mumble under your breath or go call your friend, or you're loathing, you're, you know, you're loathing him. And so, and it, and it is a scary thing because I began to look at my husband as he's my protector. He's the one that, you know, it, it, I need guidance. I don't know it all. I need his help. Um, and I should go to him. I shouldn't and, and I shouldn't be going to my friends and this person and that person. I should be going to my husband. 
and more so when I get in a place of total despair sometimes i just ask god lord help show me what it, you know show me what to do here and so as a wife i i know that i'm not perfect and i'm sure there are times when my husband probably loathes me too but this is what i will say when i change my behavior toward the obedience and the submission with my husband, I saw beautiful change. Not just for, for me to him, but him to me. Um, and if we love the Lord and he is our husband, he is our bride. I'm my husband's bride too. I'm his bride. Ultimately, of course, God is the, the ultimate bride, but my husband is my bride and I'm his. And so for my children, one of the things my, um, I really love was that they all told me, and I don't remember, but they said, mom and dad never argued in front of us. That's their memory that I never heard them argue and when my kids would say things that they felt especially Tori were wrong I would always correct her um it is like you said it is important because these things trickle down I, I watch my mom do some things and one of the things I tried really hard not to do I don't talk to my kids about what's going on with my husband and my and my situation because that can destroy them Okay, it will destroy them. And so um, I'm a work in progress, but I'm trying to learn to love to be obedient to my husband. Because I know if I'm obedient to the Lord, if I can do that, I can be obedient unto him. And if I can be obedient unto him, then I know I can be obedient unto the Lord because the hardest thing is to deal with another human being in that regard of telling you what to do. And I had to get out of the mindset of, you can't tell me. Well, he's supposed to tell me. And anything that he is not doing, I have left that up to the Lord. I don't, I don't, I try my best not to correct my husband. We can have a conversation and things may come up, um, but it's not in a contentious way. We talk about the word of God and what it means um, in, in these situations. Um, so yeah, uh, yeah, that's it. I know I said a lot, but I don't, you know, anyway. <laughs> Amen. It's still open. One minute, uh, for the men that's out there, I don't I don't know what date, but I mean we all know uh, ours will be um, the one out of Ephesians four. Good evening, everyone. God bless everyone. I'm sitting here just getting spanked. And I know that the Lord loves me so much. And I just want to thank the Holy Spirit for, you know, correction. Because I am my mother's daughter. I tell my husband that sometimes, like, I'm my mother's daughter. And there's certain things that I even shared with my sister Paula that I don't want to, to go that route in some areas. My mom was a, um, I think, you know, in my eyes anyway, I, uh, she did, you know, we all you know, did the best that we could. but. I know that there was a lot of pain, a lot of uh, suffering there. And uh, sometimes, you know, I know for me that because of my pain and my hurt, um, I responded in a way 
And so I asked the Lord to heal my heart and to, uh, I just asked him to do that because I knew that I had unforgiveness and I had resentment. And these are the things that growing up, it was, um, within the household. And again, um, because Paul and I are sisters, I never saw my mom and my stepfather argue in front of us either, but I am guilty of arguing in front of my son with my husband over the years. And, um, and I, when I was listening to this lesson, I says, I'm after this lesson, I'm definitely going to call my um, son and to clarify some things. And um, because he is a product of my husband and I, and certain things I see and I recognize because the Lord showed it to me because I asked him and he showed some things about me. <laughs> and I, I appreciate that because when I stand in front of the Lord, I'm going to be accountable for my actions and for my stuff. And so, um, and, and even, even today I was like, Lord, forgive me because I was disobedient. And before I even uh, got on this call, I was looking over the lesson and I even asked my husband when he came to the door after I listened to, I mean, looked over the lesson, I says, babe, I says, you consider me to be obedient. I mean, disobedient towards you. He's like, he was responsible. He's like, yeah. And then I says, well, do, is it all the time or is it sometimes? He goes, well, and he just pondered on that. And he just says, well, let me get back to you on that. Cause I guess he just didn't have the answer. I guess it was kind of like, for me, it was like out of the blue. Cause I just was on my mind after I read the lesson over and that came to my mind that I'm being disobedient to the Lord. And it grieved my heart because we say, like you said, we love the Lord, but we lie. And I asked the Lord to forgive me. And we have to just, you know, move, I just have to move on, you know, and, and just do, you know, better because I remember writing a long time ago down that I want it to be what God wants me to be. And I remember saying, God, you have Kenny be what you want him to be. And I remember one day, you know, um, I remember one day I was just uh, still and he says, how do you know I didn't have Kenny to be like that way for you? And I said, Lord, and I just thank the Lord for that because the chastising and the correction is good because he loves me. And I just see, I feel the love so much right now. And I receive it. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for it. Because each and every one of us, and I only can speak for myself, is that we want to do good. And I know we find ourselves not doing the things that we you know, want to do. But I just know that in my heart, that it is good. And um, my husband and I have been together for 33 years. And I'm just like, Lord, you talk about, because um, I remember one time saying, Lord, can I endure? Can he endure me through all my stuff? to get better and better and can I endure him through all his stuff to get better and better and I just like Lord help us and I pray for uh, my correction and to look at myself and that's what happened for me three years ago when I came here to Tennessee and just and I keep on saying it because the Holy Spirit was showing so many things about me and I didn't see it and I remember even going to my son and saying, I'm tearing down my house. You know, I remember, you know, just, you know, just um, remembering that, but there's some areas that I know I was obedient in because there was times where, yes, the enemy was lying to me and he did lie to me and he did deceive me and wanting to just leave and just get out. And, you know, and I said, no, and I, and I just made up my mind. I said, no, I am going to stay and I am going to ask the Lord. So the process right now, this is the, this is, this is what's happening from back then to now. And I says, Lord, for the next 30 years, if you're Lord willing, whatever you decide for me to be where I wasn't for the first part of my marriage. <laughs> so I just thank the Lord for um, his, uh, his chastisement. I thank the Lord for his correction. And I thank the Lord for this lesson. Um, because it needs to be in the forefront of my mind that obedience to my husband is so good. 
and taking the wrong is so good and suffering is so good. And I learned that through my dog today, how he's, I feel like he's suffering right now and I'm trying to give him pain, you know, things for his pain and everything, but he is so obedient. He was the most obedient dog through it all. No matter what. Very obedient. The best example of those little things that the Lord gives me. And I thank him for it. Thank him for it. So forgive me, Lord. Forgive me. Chastise me. Correct me. With my husband. And help me to be that helper that you assigned me. Because you remember, I remember saying too that he says, I didn't ask <laughs> the man to help the woman, the woman to help the man. And help me with that too, the, the correction of being supportive of him and whatever decision he makes. And to go to God and to pray that he makes the decision that God would have him to make. That's the prayer. Go to God and uh, not so much having it your way, but what God would have it to be. And so um, I'm just thankful uh, and joyful. I just feel really good right now just to share and to be transparent. Um, I just feel really joyful right now. So I thank the Holy Spirit again. I just thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And for the guys, correction, Ephesians 5, um, we're going to learn how we are bitter. Because the Bible, see, it's it's when you look in the Bible, strange how God, he puts the subjection and the obedient thing in there for the women. But then when the men read of what kind of man am I, am I supposed to be before God, before my wife and my children. And one of the things God writes, husbands, be not bitter towards your wives. Now you got to find out and how you know, almost like they keep asking Malachi, how do we rob you? How do we so-and-so? And God be like, okay, then I'm going to tell you. So he will tell us in what ways do we show bitterness? Because a man evidently is bitter towards a wife or God wouldn't have wrote it for you to recognize it. So that's the one I'm going to write for the men. And uh, some of you all heard about the arguing in front of kids. It's the opposite with me and my wife. In our in our early year, we we argued everything right in front of them, to the point that one of my sons, when he got older, said the reason he acted the way he acted because of us. Now, I mean, I know he has his own thing, but I also know he was correct, and I had made a promise to him on that day that. In front of you, I will always and try to never be like like that in front of you with your mom. In other words, I don't want that to be an excuse for you. And then I don't want to uh, be, be that way. But we used to argue because wouldn't my wife is strong willed and I'm strong willed and neither one of us would bend. So we didn't wait to go like off in a room somewhere. And, you know, so. Uh, God bless you, some of you who <laughs> never argued in front of your kids. But like I said, it has an effect on them for sure. All right, it's still open. I'm going to leave it open just for a little while. And um, I still would like all, all the ladies to text me or email me, you know, not only, you know, what you've learned from this, but also your perspective of, like you said, what some people said, you know, what is load? And then all of a sudden you hear certain scriptures and you can see what it is, you know? And, um, and then I'm, and I'm waiting for my wife to give me her perspective because I really want to hear all the things that God has given her. So it's still open. Yeah, like I just, like I said, when you just said that, I don't want to be, um, and I have to look up because I know there's more than, loathing is more than just the things that I said you know as I'm just standing here 
thinking about, you know, all, you know, wanting to be right and wanting to make get my point across and wanting to do all these things that in the end, it's me. I have to see myself and then getting mad when he doesn't see it my way or he doesn't see my point or why am I even trying to make the point? And sometimes one of the things where it says um, in the word about being meek and meek, mild spirited, right? Being meek, have a meek spirit, be a peacemaker. You know, you don't always have to react to everything. And so, you know, let's let, let you know, when you feel that, pray about it. You know, ask the Lord to help you in that moment because we are so, we are so wanting to, you know, make a point or make that person wrong so that you can be right. And, and then you feel good about it thinking you did something, but the spanking is coming to me. And like you said with Israel, this is nothing new. It's over and over and over and over and over again. And as the, as the scripture said today, the daughter, the mother of the daughters of the mother, the mother of the daughters. It's like, whoa. And you don't even think that. And then when you think back of what how long it takes to learn these things, because you don't know. So now I'm looking back at dang, you know, um, I think about my 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 own children, like, wow, you know, now I have some work to do, not only for that, but for the, even at work. I mean, people that I know, people that I'm around, you know, it's not just my immediate daughters, it's the people that I work with, the people that I come in contact with, how I show up. And one of the things you were saying, I remember telling my mom, you know, and these things kind of sometimes stick with you, right? And when you were talking about the skirts and the dress, and, and I thought back to myself, I'm like, hmm. I, I tell Tori and Marcel all the time, why you got that on? You know, that's not for everybody to see. But my mother told me that, that your body is not for the world to see. And I used to wear turtlenecks in the summertime. Is that, that why you covered I, up? Yeah, all that's all why I covered up all the time because of what she said to me. I didn't know why she said it, but I remember her dressing very elegant. She always had herself covered up. You never saw cleavage. You know? and, and I would be walking around 100 degree weather, you know, with, but like you said, I, I can tell them, but they're going to do what they want to, they're going to do anyway. Times have, you know, saying so much or whatever the case may be. But um, when, 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 when you go into the word of God and it talks about the earrings and all this stuff and, you know, um, making yourself the other, so other people can look at you and this, that, and the other as women. And like she's, like he said, we're supposed to teach the younger women how to be. But then I think in the church, would anybody ever teach me how to be? So now it's just up to, to me to find for myself, Lord, how do you, what, what kind of the woman you want me to be? Show me the woman that you want me to be. And then that's where I go from. Not what I saw in the past because that's done and over with. Okay. And he's, and, and I believe he's saying, you know, you can no longer use that. Okay. Because now my word is telling you the woman how I want you to be for me, how I want my bride to be, my daughter to be. And I can ask for prayer for Eric's mother. Yes. Amen. And pray for me right now. I just got in my spirit. And Paula, you probably, I don't know if you took offense of that or not. When I said what I just said just a few minutes ago, I just want to say apologize for to everybody on the call. <laughs> the way I responded, I just kind of like, yeah. It's still open. I know, and, and if any, any guys out there, it ain't just got to be the lady speaking right now. Uh, see if the, the, remember, you're also part of the church. So don't think those scriptures still ain't uh, talking about us. See, it's, in other words, with the church, it's conglomerate. It's like we all have to learn to be quiet before the Lord as men 
um, instead of being uh, 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 mouthy to him. We don't, and we don't realize again, uh, 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 a man is very boisterous, very loud. You know, and some of us think the louder we are, the more we can defeat you know, somebody with our boldness. Um, but it teaches us how also to be. So just so, it, in other words, it don't have to be just the women speaking right now. So um, I'm going to give a few more minutes. And uh, like Sister Paula said, pray for Brother Eric's uh, uh, mom. And um, I think that she has to go, and I, Paula can correct me, in the, the, the hospice or, you know, wherever you go. And, and you know, because she's, she's uh, uh, really ill. And sometimes it's very hard on the family uh, when a family member have to be away from you. And even some people in their mind, the, the one that's being put away thinking, you know, why are you abandoning me? So all those things are hard. So, but in this life, this we have to deal with it the best uh, we can. All right, it's still open. A few more minutes. Well, thank God for the lesson. Um, uh, from the lesson, uh, as I was listening, just I'm, I'm looking for the things that, you know, uh, pertaining to myself, even though that it was um, mostly toward the, 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 the women. But how do, how do I fit in there? Yeah, I, I saw a lot of my wrong uh, and behavior uh, just from... Uh, you know, listening and just sit back and, you know, just kind of pondering on it, you know, just for a little bit. And it's like, wow, Lord, you know, how we interpret your word, how we understand your word is so far not right. Um, I know it wasn't right for myself, so I'm, I'm going to just speak for, for me. Not right with the understanding that I was receiving, you know, um, even in our uh, reference to about, you know, women and, 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 and things like that, because most of my understanding was from what I was hearing from other men and uh, from other uh, ministers, uh, how what uh, they were reading. But I find it interesting that women have um, roles um, to follow just as well as men has roles to follow. And um, when we try to share, uh, or well, I'm not going to say share, uh, I'm going to say minister, uh, because this is what happened. They're hearing the roles from the man, his views, and what the Lord is saying. Uh, my whole time in the ministry, I found it very interesting that even though a lot of the women, uh, when they were hearing the man, you know, are the ministers uh, interpret what uh, the word was saying. And, and, and then it was pretty, you know, um, um, almost like one-sided. But what I, what I come to find out is I haven't, I haven't came across a woman who, who, who says, these are the roles of the women. These are the things that the Lord is telling us. Uh, this is what the Lord is speaking to us. I don't hear the women. I think one of the ladies earlier, there was either you, Brother Hackett, I think you were saying, you know, for the older, let the older woman teach the younger. But when you go through those churches and a lot of the organizations and even through schools, you're not finding the women teaching the women. Mostly what I've been coming across is the women's coming against what the man is saying, what the word is saying, you know, uh, in reference to the woman. But I'm not hearing the woman say, no, this is what the word is saying about us and for us, you know, to do. Just like the word tells the men various things to follow and, and to do. So it's like we, 
we shouldn't have to speak for them. They should be speaking for themselves. We need to continue speaking for ourselves and be the example for them. Because um, one thing that um, um, Brother Hackett mentions a lot is you don't, well, not him. He's reading from the word. Um, and I'm going to just paraphrase it. Um, you don't win the, the man nor the woman by the conversation that you're having with them. It's by the example that you're setting before them. You know, your behavior, your actions, your attitude. Just like what Brother was saying earlier about, you know, how he interacted with his wife and, you know, with his children. And then later on, the children were saying, well, Dad, I got it from you. Well, you know, I only had children by marriage, none, none of my own personally, you know. And um, so even with that, I still looked at how, now it's really funny. My, my mom and dad, they didn't argue in front of us. But I come to finding myself doing that uh, in front of the kids. And it's like, well, wait a minute. If, if, I didn't, if they weren't doing them, where, where did I get it from? More of the things of self within us that I had to come to learn about as far as my behavior and, you know, and uh, my misunderstanding. But to get more back uh, to uh, the word and um, just my, 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 you know, thought here um, is I, I found that to be very interesting. I never really saw or hear women saying these are the roles or this is what the Lord is saying that the women is to either to do or to do because their perspective is going to be different from a man's perspective and how did they see. So when we're speaking it, we're, we're not defining it the way that the Lord is having it defined. We're defining it more from the macho-ness of ourselves, how we come to learn what, you know, uh, being submissive is, these things like that. You know, you better put that woman in your place, man. You know, you need to tell her, you know, shut them off and all of these things like that. No, 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 no. If it was expressed by example, I would have kept my mouth more closed in my first marriage, <laughs> which I wind up learning, you know, later in my second marriage, but it would have just been very helpful that if I had understood I'm to just be more of an example than a speaker, but I found myself being more of a speaker along with trying to be an example at the same time. Oh man, it just really, um, it really messed up um, things uh, in my first marriage and um, made things, uh, I just say, challenging in my second marriage, but I'm learning, you know, and I will continue, you know, to learn. It's by example, it's not by speaking. And you, and you find it, Sometimes it's pretty hard to keep your mouth quiet, you know. Uh, no, let me let me let me let me express a little bit how I feel because of what just was done to me or what was just was done to me. No, it's best for me to just be an example. Keep my mouth closed and go talk to the Lord about the situation. But my reaction is going, it's, it's just right to her, you know, or maybe even right to another gentleman, or maybe even to another minister. God bless you, brother, and each and every one of y'all on the line and those that are hearing, you know, these messages as they uh, come forth. Lord, keep giving us more wisdom and understanding and guidance, Father, as we go forth these days. And there was someone to pray for, and I don't recall their name, but Lord, you know their name and you know their situation and their circumstance, Lord. And I just ask that you meet those areas in their life and the challenges that they are having, Father, through your son, uh, Jesus. Amen. I heard something interesting. Um, if there were two people standing in a room, a man and a woman, I'm not going to use husband and wife, man and a woman. 
And the woman said, uh, Lord, you know, show me how to serve you. And then the Lord said, well, you can serve me by doing thus, this, and this. Then the man should obey. If the, if the Lord says, well, I have to show you how you loathe your husband. Then that means the man in listening should immediately say, and wherein Lord has our caused her to loathe me. See, see, and that's what I mean by nobody's going to get away. Yes, bro. Yes. And, and so, so where one causes a trouble mm -hmm. to another, the other should wonder, Lord, wherein did I cause them to be troubled? In other words, it, it's just like the, uh, and that, I think that'll be in another lesson we're going to have next week about the judge and versus rebuke. But it just shows how everybody should want to know their size. And let me do something Brother Bobby just said, too. Notice that in your Bible, as you start from, oh, uh, I would go from the book of Acts, what I'm saying, from the book of Acts, the Revelations. Everything that was being taught immediately was not being taught by a woman. In other words, Timothy took a letter to some people to say, Timothy, go teach the women that they should be teaching the younger women. That's why it reads the way it reads. Titus, go tell the age women that likewise, as the men are taught to be sober, that they be sober also. So it started out with the man, and that's how it should be also in God's church. In other words, the man is the head. He teaches the women so the women know how to teach the women. So it, so it should, in other words, that continuance should go on. The man would teach the woman, and then the women know to teach the women. But like you said, in most of our churches, you don't find really classes that the woman is actually teaching the woman how to be a woman of God with that same question. Lord, show me how to be this. And God said, well, one of the ways is you'll be subject to a man. Because being subject to a man will teach you to be subject to me. So so it goes on and on and on. And then I want to say this for Bobby, you brought it up, how you don't have natural children, but from a marriage. All the women that's out there that's not married and you th think this don't pertain to you, like Sister Paula said, all are your daughters. Whether it's on your job, whether it's on your so-and-so, you can't make the claim, I don't have a daughter to teach this to. Yes, yes. So, 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 in other words, in everything we do, keep your mind and heart on the question to God, which he already knows. Show me how to obey you. Show me how to, and we already should know better. It's going to come down to, can you do this with each other? And if you can't do it with each other, you can't do it with me because I gave you that that's the proof. So you can't prove it by bypassing the man and then coming straight to me. Well, I don't need to talk to him. I'm going to talk to God. Talk to your husband. You don't know what God going to give him. So, 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 uh, and again, men, bitter. You can start looking already. We're going to learn how are we bitter towards our wives, because whether you think you are or not, according to your scriptures, God knows you are. That's why he wrote it. Husbands, be not bitter towards your wife. So there's something in our spirit of a man that women makes you bitter towards them. Now, women should immediately be saying, Lord, wherein do I make him bitter? See, if everybody hears their part, then that's how it's supposed to work. Right. And that that's what I was going to ask you, Hack, about like when I think early on, I used to think, okay, that women were not to speak. They were to be quiet. They don't have opinions. You just listen to what your husband says and daddy, daddy, do, right? Right. But now I look at it from the standpoint there, I know that there are times when my husband is quiet for a reason. And it has provoked me to think, okay, mm -hmm. what did I just say or do 
that he's not even responding to right now. Maybe three, three days. Do you have three days later? He will come to me, and we'll have a discussion. So that is the submissiveness to one another. It's not that he's this power over you, but if you understand, like you just said, it works if we submit to one another instead of always going to the dominant one and I'm the wife and, you know, the role playing and all this stuff. You don't have to role play. It's about being able to be in a situation. And there are times, and I want to ask you this too real quick. There are times where I'm in my flesh. My husband may say something or do something to me. And I don't say nothing to him. But I'm like, okay, Lord, you know, I'm really angry right now. What, you know, help me through this because I'm, you know, I don't want to lash out. And I don't lash out. And I calm myself down. It's because I thought what I thought is it is like just lashing out or there are those, do you understand what I'm saying? I'm getting yeah. out. Or is it, okay, do you, you know what? Be angry, but sin nothing. Or is it because I thought it, I'm, you know, I sin. You yeah, know? Yeah. Because you know, go ahead. No, well, you, you know, even as I hear us say this, when I hear us say things like, you know, and then I asked the Lord, you know, the, the, well, Lord, I need help right here and show me what the, and <laughs> I can show you through your Bible, you already know. Right. Yeah, you said yes, that before. You're, you're, and you're, you're just fighting with whether you want to obey that scripture. Uh -huh. and, and even when a, 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 a man gets quiet and won't talk, we already know in the spirit of a woman, the first thing is, oh, I'm going to make him talk. Oh, not me, nine more. No, no, what I'm saying, so I'm going to say, do something right now, and he want to tell me, I want to know, what did I do? Uh-huh. Why are you not talking to me? Uh-huh. You're literally provoking the fight. Right. So, 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 this is what we do know. When you ask the Lord to help you, and as soon as your spirit knows, the help is put away the anger. Right, right. In other words, before you go anywhere else. Right. Put away the anger, because if you don't, the motive behind all that you do that you think going to be right is right. that you're still angry. Exactly. Okay. That's why once even the right answer comes, you find a way to fight that. Mm -hmm. So it goes from you think you wanted to know, but you wanted to know to, to fuel your fight. Mm -hmm. You know, so 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 we we just got to be willing to we just got to be willing to obey God. And let me say this again, why God wrote for a man that don't obey the word. And I heard Keisha said a little bit, and, and it's good because when God allows people in our life that don't click the way we want them to, it's for you. that's for you. For you, yeah. How you, how you gonna, if you had a, a husband that was completely good, I mean, his name would be Jesus, if you had a husband, <laughs> if you had a husband that was completely good, then you would have nothing to prove you ain't. Mm -hmm. So now God says, "Well, but see, I'm a, I'm gonna go. I can use this all the way back to the Old Testament when God would let Israel get captured by a nation. God would tell Israel, "I allowed you to be captured because of your sins against me." Oh, yeah. Yeah. Then, then when the captive nation would capture them, God would kind of a little bit be showing the, the nation, okay, I let you capture my people, but while they're there, make sure you treat them correctly. Now, when they didn't, it took advantage of, God let us capture them, we're going to be our slaves, we're going to do them a job. God says, and now I'm going to make you, even though I'm the one that allowed you to capture them, now I'm going to make you pay for capturing them. So I hope you understand that. So you got a disobedient husband, one that don't, don't obey the word. And God says, good, because now we're going to prove what kind of woman you are. And all the things I tell you not to do, instead of having a quiet and meek spirit, instead of adorning yourself with all this, you're going to rise up against me 
and think you can tell him what the word says anyway. And he listens to you. Even though he listens to you and now he's not guilty, you are. So now I don't prove to you that even if you had a good one, it wouldn't make no difference that you were still going to disobey me. See, we don't understand these things or we don't want to understand them. That God gives you hate haters so you can love. All lovers wouldn't help you. Amen. God shows us wrath by letting angels fall so you could know what mercy was. That's something that he has to make a choice like that. To make something that he loved before you were made, allow them to fall so you could know his mercy, that they don't get a second chance, but you do. So, 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 Never, that's why he says, be thankful in everything. Never complain about nothing God allows, not even a disobedient husband, because he's making you better. All right. Amen. Uh, amen. And that's what I know to be, to be true. And um, again, I just thank the Holy Spirit that we're, um, we're on all this, this journey of being better. I told <laughs> this guy at my job, he said, how long have you been married, Keisha? And I said, we've been married for 30 years, but I was living in sin for three years. And <laughs> but I didn't tell him that. I'm just, you know, sharing with y'all. But anyway, um, he says, well, I've been married uh, three times. And I was like, okay. You know, and I said to myself, I said, I mean, I know this is probably not correct, but I did say this. And I said, so I guess you have some that uh, get married more than three, more than one time and get better. And then you have those that stay in the marriage and get better if that's what they want to do, you know, in their marriage and as it, as it grows, and as it gets mature. Because I do find myself loving my husband more now than I did back then. Because, and even in my selfish ways, still, I, they're still there, but it's not, but I'm recognizing it and um, seeing myself. And so whenever I see myself, I see it within my husband. And so that gives me, you know, to love God, to love myself so I can love him. And so, um, because I want to, I want to love God and I want to, you know, love myself and I want to love my husband. And I just, I see that now. I didn't see that back then. And like you were saying before, there's no one really out there sharing what God says to do in these in in, in our in this this marriage thing. And then plus, I know that we're again learning to um, not to apply our life and our circumstances, you know, with the Word of God or trying to fit it into what we want, but just doing what it says. And that's been a reminder for me also and I thank the Lord for that and I've been you know and I'm beginning to understanding and I remember sh I shared it with my friend that has been married as long as I have and I'm able to share with her and, and, and impart to her that you know our husbands I have this similar ways when it comes to military and other things you know in their in their background or whatever but I'm just looking at my stuff and I and I really hone in when she does call me on our stuff, not our husband's stuff, but just our stuff and how we respond and how we react and how our thoughts, because I remember a friend of mine saying that is so evil, Keisha. And I didn't realize what she meant by that. But now I do three years ago, four years ago, I think it's four or five years ago. Now, all this time, I understand now what she meant by the, uh, the evil part of it, of, of, of my being. And I was like, cause I was thinking it was, he was the evil one. Even, you know, it's just cool. It's so kind of like, I told my husband the other day, I said, there's certain things that you have said over the years that you probably didn't even know <laughs> what you were saying. But now that I know better, I'm like, what you were saying back then was right. And I was like, Lord, look at you. You're the one, Keisha. You're the man. And I'm like, Lord, thank you for correction. Again, thank you for showing me, me, 
and continue to keep on showing me me, even as I speak right now, Lord. And my sister and I, we and she knows there's so many conversations that we've had because it was learned behavior from what, you know, passed down of sharing your marriage and your stuff with, with your children and experiencing those things within your home. And if I, if I, what I know, like I said, what you know now, you, you know, from back then, you probably would do things differently, but you know, God is so good and I would not change a thing. And I remember saying to the Lord, even though I know that you've shared with this with me, I thank you so much. I thank you so much through the, the suffering and through the pain and through the, the resentment and through the anger and through all of that. And you continue to keep on loving me. I thank you so much, Lord. I thank you. Because I'm my eyes are being opened in that in little bit by little bit, the scales are coming off and it goes right back to me. And how, what, and I ask the Lord sometimes, you know, okay, really, what is your motive here? Or what is, why are you feeling this way? I just, why are you feeling this way? Give me the truth. And I wrote down in my, in my, in my notes, um, a little note. And I said to myself, I says, Lord, I want you to show me, um, or tell me, um, how you want me to, we are, we already know how to respond, but I put on this note that, um, when it comes to, um, friendships and, and I really want my husband to be my friend and he is my friend. And, but I want it to be more, you know, I'm like, Lord, help me to be more intimate with my husband when it comes to my thoughts and to be safe and feel safe with it. And so, um, with that being said, I have a friend and I wrote down that my friend had uh, basically cut off a friendship with me before I left to come to Tennessee. And it was a long relationship. We worked together and we, we went to church together. We did everything together. And I was like, okay, but I wrote that Kristen, you know, that she would come to an understanding and that I would come into an understanding that I did not, Basically, she said I, she accused me of talking behind her back. And I didn't, I don't recall doing that at all. And I asked the Lord that if he would show me and give me the understanding, open my eyes to what I have said or done. And if I have offended, show me what I've said and done so that I can go to her and I can, you know, um, make it not so much make it right because it it, it has to come you know you know mutual or maybe not correct me on that but I just know in my heart that I have um I just would love to have her friendship just like I would love to have a deeper intimate friendship with my husband and and um and I just you know that's my heart desire um to have that you know, and I think with that being said, having a deeper relationship and deeper friendship with God or with, you know, Jesus, then in turn that this could possibly, not possibly, but it could, you know, be that way. Um, and if it, and if it, and whatever Lord's, uh, well, I'm not going to go there, but anyway, that's it. That's, that's enough. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. Uh, uh, one of the things I want to say, and I'm, some time with uh, uh, and brother Bobby, he's you know he's been through some things with ministries and pastors and learning, and this is what I gotta say. I remember when I used to do a uh, prison ministry, and even like I said, I was in newspapers and stuff. And one guy who was a murderer is now a minister, and parents would hear about that. And when we had our first murder in juvenile hall, the chiefs of police took me out to the neighborhood in Montclair, Montclair, California, because the gang members were waiting outside the house for the chiefs to come because they wanted to do them some harm. So they took me. And because of the way I were with the young people, um, 
they thought that maybe mine would subside. And we went in the house and they were Catholic. I could see the stuff on the wall and uh, the, the grandmother, especially. And I had my priest collar on. And as soon as she seen it, um, you know, she called me father and all those kind of things. And and then the gang member outside, outside with the other gang members, it was the brother. And he came in the house and he came in the house actually to tell off the police department again of how they could let this happen. And the grandmother said something in Spanish to the boy. And then he grabbed my hand and we all began to pray. Now, the reason I'm saying that is this. I would have parents call me and they thought that I could turn their kids from murderers to ministers. And just like you said now, nobody's teaching these things. I got to tell you again, nobody gets away. I don't care what a man is teaching in this world. God's still going to know, but you could have came to me. You could have came to me. So even though we've missed that time, praise God for his grace and mercy, and we seem to be getting it now. Somebody would say, well, what do you teach you now? Let me, I got some friends. You need to come here uh, on Zoom or this guy, Pastor Ask is teaching. And he's teaching the things is, don't you know if that's not what's in their heart and what they want to know anyway? Everything that's being taught wouldn't do them no good. See, everything that you learn now that you're starting to accept, I said starting to accept. For some reason in your heart, you have got to the point to say, I'm trying to surrender my will to you, Lord, and I'm hearing the word because there's other stuff go along with this. It's like commentary. I'm hearing the word and God is just, I know his heart is, is glad, glad because he knows when you say you're starting to hear the word, you're starting to listen to him. Don't never put your faith or trust in the voice of the human or the voice of what's coming from us or what you're hearing. It will always be God. And whatever you decide to submit to, it ain't because you think you're hearing some new good doctrine or some new good thing, you're hearing what your heart always have known. And it just confirmed that you're going to hear you or listen to you or you're going to listen to God. And so, so, and my wife said something to me today too, and it shocked me a little bit at first because she said, all, all of us don't fear the Lord like you do. And it scared me a little bit, but then she went on to explain and it had more about being in the word, you know, it's like being in the word or that's where you, you, you teach and you do what you do because you fear the Lord. Because I know she couldn't have been talking about fear the Lord like you do, like I'm doing stuff right. Cause I know she know better than that. So, so always in everything that we do and every lesson we learn, that's why I asked you, even after you leave here, go back over those scriptures. Let God talk to you from his, to you, to you from his word. And, and as you said, it feels real good when you're finally able to obey something that's in there. Where I wanted to say something to my wife that I shouldn't have said, but the scripture told me right here to be quiet. And I was able to do that. It feels beautiful to obey God. But like anything, sometime that growth, you got to be careful again. Because as you begin to grow and now you read your scriptures and you seem to be obey God, and then here comes Mr. Vanity. Same thing that happened to Satan. Beautiful until iniquity was found in him. And his beauty was his downfall. So we got to be careful that, that all goodness is God. And that goodness means good husband, bad husband. 
a man already that's getting ready to stutter for being bitter towards your wife, thank God for a nagging wife. Thank God for a wife that causes you trouble because now you will know what real love is and can you do it? Because me, Dennis Hackett, as a nagging wife, nags my God. Me, Dennis Hackett, as a nagging wife, causes him trouble, causes him hurt, it causes him despair. His spirit grieves within me. But I know he loves me because that husband, the maker, he never divorce, divorces his wife. He never gives up on his wife. If he told me in that same scripture of being bitter against her, but to long suffer, I know it's way beyond the one he telling me for me that he has for me. And that's why in verse 26, I'm speaking concerning Christ and the church, which means Christ and every saved individual reading this. So, so, Amen. so, all right, well, we're going to close in prayer. This was good. So all the women out there, don't forget email, text, uh, what, what you learned more, or what you got from it, or, you know, just something. So when I teach next week, along with what my wife has, I'm teaching from the perspective of what you've seen, what you've learned, what you still don't know. You didn't quite still understand how this or that. So we're going to close in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for this day. We thank you again for this life abundant, that only not life in this world, but when we leave here, we have life after, you know, and, and uh, we thank you again for, I will always think of, like I did her mom, Miss Joe, for the death of our sister that in her death, just like more so the death of the Lord, it reminds us each day, we don't know the days that we have. We should number them. We should count them. And if it was this day and this chance that we had a chance to hear how we loathe you, I'd rather have learned this and repented unto you than to have just enjoyed what we call life in the day. So we just give you praise and honor and glory because it's proving every time we come together like this in the Lord and speak of your name and every time because that's the scripture you wrote and you think about those that think on your name and that come together to talk about you. And every time we're chastised and reproved and every time we're corrected, it's a beautiful thing that God has wiped something off in the day of judgment, in the day of those books the love of God that will continue to do this. And even though it grieves your spirit, it don't weary you to the point that you give up on us, leaving us an example, like we supposed to leave for our sons and leave for our daughters. You are the first one that leaves the examples, the real examples of what we should follow. Showing again that even if my mother was wrong, even if my father was wrong, I have a husband, I have a father, I have a brother to show me an example of how I'm supposed to be. We're praying for, again, Eric's mom, again, in her health right now, that you would give her some kind of peace. We're praying for peace of the family and the decisions they have to make, that they don't feel regret when they've done all that you've given them to do. Some people might think, again, that a parent should always be home with the kids until the day that they leave. Some people know that they have not the strength for that, to take care of them the way they need to take care of. And they know that they would be better took care of by someone else that you've given that ability to and that job and that gift. So we just ask that you give them the strength to not argue over their decisions and not be bitter towards each other. And so we just thanking you again, Lord. We're praying for my brother Gary and Tenzi as Sister Tinsley recovers from her knee surgery and Brother Gary's eyes of the operations he has to go through and uh, praying for the vertigo of uh, uh, Brother Ricky again as he's still 
long suffers with it in you, but never complaining, but to mm -hmm. give you glory. And 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 I know there's a lot more of us out there that's sick and have things wrong. We're just praying again. We don't be bitter against you because of it. But again, you you already told us from the beginning when you put the angels around the tree, man was not designed to stay here. And the beauty in that out of this flesh will come our spirit with a second chance for redemption that you didn't leave us in this flesh like the angels stayed in their estate and never had a second chance. So, so you know, we thank you for all that you do. And even the things we don't understand or the things that's not written in your scriptures that, that we don't need to know. We just know again, you are a good God. You said you, said you are. You're not a liar because you said you're not. So we give you praise and honor and glory for everything. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Bless everyone here. And not only, only that, those that come under the sound of uh, your word, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. God bless you all. And I'll uh, see you next week. Uh, men study the bitterness. And next week we're going to have the uh, judgment, judging versus rebuke. What's the difference? All right. See you guys next week.